I watched this movie twice, and I'm pissed. I want to have a rant. So here we go. So the Republic is defeated and Snoke leads the reigning First Order as it mercilessly seizes control across the galaxy. What the fuck was the Republic? What the fuck was the First Order? Is the Republic the five planets that got wiped out in Force Awakens? Did we even get to see it in operation? They only said it was apparently a peaceful Republic, and I suppose it did stuff. But then the fledgling and crippled Empire, now known as the First Order, no, fuck that, they are the Empire, is able to wipe the Republic off the face of the Earth and run amok across the galaxy. Or scratch that, fuck taking over the galaxy. They're going to chase a fucking rebel cruiser. Sorry, I mean resistance cruiser. No, fuck that, they are the rebels. The entire fucking empire is chasing a resistance cruiser in order to crush the Republic? What the fuck is going on in this world? The Republic was literally just those planets and layers cruiser, apparently. Where is the galaxy-wide outrage at the empire for doing this shit, for mass murder? They just nuked all of the galaxy's leaders. Did nobody give a fuck? Did everyone just say, well, whatever, I guess. The empire is now the leader until someone blows them up and then it's the Republic again. No allegiances, no factions, no protocol, no fucking repercussions. The rebels blew up the stupid super Death Star, the only real threat the Empire had, so the galaxy should unite against one of the most terrifying acts of war and bloodshed ever known to the galaxy. Instead, we have no world building whatsoever. No POV from anybody across the galaxy except those inside Leia's fucking cruiser. Jesus Christ, this film would have you believe that there are no other major players in this fucking world except maybe Maz Kanata and Porgs. Fucking porks. The crawl then says Leia is certain that Luke will return and save the day. Just Luke? Just find Luke and he'll beat the Empire, huh? Do you not have a plan beyond that? Jesus fucking Christ, here we go. We see then that the rebel forces have been found on what we assume is their planet of safety, much like in The Empire Strikes Back. Only here, they are struggling to get into their ships and speed off into hyperspace. Well, kind of just like the other film. Yes, we skipped recovering from the death of Han Solo and the introduction of what everyone is actually doing to bring you an immediate space battle. We then see the Dreadnought class destroyer that has the ability to blow stuff up better than other stuff that blows up things. Poe and BB-8 park their X-Wing right in front of the Dreadnought. It doesn't immediately get shot despite being in attack mode for reasons. And moments before the Dreadnought is going to potentially destroy the remainder of the only resistance to the horrifying Empire, Poe calls Hux to make a your mother joke. The pattern you're going to spot in this movie is the blatant attempt at being funny even at the cost of the delivery of the scene. They will shove what are woefully ineffective jokes in scenes where the utmost of dramatic interactions and serious content is taking place, a complete lack of understanding of tone. But we'll get to that. Poe downloads some plot armor and then flies into the Dreadnought to blow up every last one of its surface cannons that cannot attack him because he is too small and too close. The Dreadnought's multiple surface cannons that in the past have been shown to eviscerate fighters can't by design hit a fucking enemy fighter because it's too fucking small. What the fuck? But then, horror. Poe is hit by an enemy fighter that does literally nothing but disable his ability to shoot. This is inconvenient because there's only one surface cannon remaining and so BB-8 plays whack-a-mole with a fucking motherboard to try and fix it. Leia, knowing that enough time has been bought, tells Poe that he needs to disengage and retreat with the fleet, but he literally mutes her and continues to fight the fucking Dreadnought. Which he now can, because BB-8 comically shoves his head into the motherboard and that somehow fixes it. Now that Poe has completed the Destroy Surface Cannons mini-quest, he has enough XP to unlock the Bomber ability, and summons Bomber-class ships out of thin fucking air. These are ships that the Empire only spot when they are right next to them for fuck's sake. What the fuck? They are set to attack the Dreadnought, which is only now possible because he destroyed all of the surface cannons. Yes, apparently these guys are immune to TIE fighters or something and surface cannons are their only kryptonite. No, scratch that, one is shot by a handful of lasers immediately and is already down. What a retarded fucking plan. Who cares if the cannons are down when fighters can nuke them anyway? Not even that matters though, since there is a freak accident that causes half a TIE fighter to end up destroying three of the bombers, leaving one to get the job done. Honestly, what the fuck is the hull integrity of these ships when they can't handle space debris or fighter shots? They are meant to sustain a fucking assault long enough to reach a destroyer to deliver a payload, yet they die to a fucking handful of blasts from a TIE fighter. As this shitstorm continues, we find the commander of the Dreadnought wants to refocus the cannons on his ship to target the fleeing cruiser as opposed to the rebel base they just destroyed. You know, the cruiser with literally every remaining fucking character except Ray and the fucking 
Korgs. Why the hell didn't you target that immediately? The base on the planet isn't going anywhere, but that cruiser contains literally the biggest collection of fucking rebels that remains, as well as being their most important asset, and you shot the emptied stative base that they abandoned first. What the fuck? We are then treated to minutes of the last bomber trying to release her payload and somehow is not destroyed by any TIE fighters. This bomber will literally end the entire crew and equipment of the Dreadnought permanently, and they know this, yet not a single fighter kamikazes into it. Well, thanks to that, the bomber is actually successful. Look at the way these bombs drop. Considering how fucking slow they are, the last bomb to actually leave the ship is probably still gonna be in there while the first one explodes. And since this thing has already shown itself to be quite the chain reaction when it comes to the explosion, I'm not convinced they can actually let loose all of their payload without killing themselves. Literally, with the method that they drop the bombs in, how does a bomber survive a bombing? This is outside of the fact that the ships are made of paper. On that note, how are the bombs even dropping down? Where the fuck is gravity coming from here? We then see that the rebel forces have lost about 80% of their fighters, and for what? Destroying a dreadnought. As Poe says in the fucking film, a dreadnought. Poe's reasoning is that a dreadnought is known as a fleet killer. It has to be stopped, even at the cost of your fucking fleet, apparently, you tool. But Poe isn't really to blame. All of those bombers and fighters followed fucking suit despite the general giving orders, or whatever, who knows what she's actually doing. Maybe that mute button that he used actually muted it for the entire fleet, who knows. A hologram of Snoke then pops up to beat the shit out of Hux for the sole reason that the rebels escaped, despite the fact that the rebels can't escape because of the tracking system that has been foreshadowed since Rogue One and apparently is currently in use. If it's as early as Rogue One in terms of development, then why the fuck does Snoke only know about this thanks to a random conversation where he was fucking with Hux? It is literally going to allow you to crush the rebellion and you haven't yet told the all-knowing supreme leader. I know why. This serious scene sharing the Empire's plans to kill our beloved characters needed some slapstick perfect. It doesn't matter that Snoke would obviously know about this already. Not to mention that a GPS that tracks through light speed is fucking ridiculous. The rebels were always guerrilla fighters. They always ran away from the Empire and set up brand new bases in distant areas of the galaxy until they were found again. Now this GPS bullshit is going to create a plot hole in every Star Wars going forward. Oh, let me guess, the opening of episode 9 will introduce a fucking cloaking device, an anti-tracker, an anti-fucking MacGuffin MacGuffin, I'm sure. What the fuck? We then see the conclusion of the very heartfelt moment where Rey passes Luke the lightsaber of his father and himself, providing the realization that he is not finished with the Rebels, with the Empire, and with the Force only to slap stickily throw it off a cliff. We then see Chewie reunite with Luke, and Luke is just mostly grumpy with him. And Rey tells Luke what Chewie is saying, despite Luke being able to understand Chewie. I guess it's that important that the audience understands, so she just forgot that they both understand Wookiee. Rey mentions the Falcon, and Luke is understandably upset that Han isn't the one explaining this shit, and so asks, where is Han? And they fucking cut to the next scene. They cut to the next fucking scene. What the fuck? You don't think that the audience might want to see how Luke Skywalker reacts to finding out that his best friend of many years, his sister's lover, the man he went to wars with, was murdered by his own son that Luke himself failed to train and inadvertently caused to fall to the dark side. You really think we wanted you to cut the fuck away from that? Then we get Snoke telling Kylo that he isn't badass enough and that his mask is fucking dumb. Funny, because I loved the mask and the voice and I felt it added to the whole aspect that Kylo overcompensated for his power despite his power being large and unruly. It was the image of intimidation that Kylo chased after his grandfather's imposing image, but fuck that part of The Force Awakens. Also, is now the only fucking time that Snoke ever complained about your mask? Really. He's never had a problem with it before. It's like the equivalent of never telling your friend about the piece of spinach in their fucking teeth or some shit. At least it was to Snoke because he thought it was ridiculous. What a prick. Anyway, Kylo destroys his mask and gets onto a TIE fighter. Then Rey asks Grumpy to come back and help the other dwarves, but he says nah. Soon after, we are faced with Luke wanking off an obese quadriplegic while it stares lovingly at Rey. This scene adds to the character development and the plot of the film. Then Rey finds the Jedi tree and explains that she wants Grumpy to seriously save the dwarves, but he says nah. Back at the cruiser, we discover that Poe is now demoted because his stupid fucking decision cost the Rebellion many lives and huge amounts of starships. Immediately after, 
Snoke and his crew turn up, and the Rebellion cruiser only has enough fuel for one more jump, but they can't because Snoke is now tracking them through light speed. I don't know why they're on name recognition with Snoke, since he was a shadowy puppet master, but apparently he is, you know, the Emperor now, and everyone follows his fucking Facebook. He is the well-known big bad guy now. Fuck development. Poe and the other fighters are scrambled, but sadly for the last fucking fighters in the fleet, they are destroyed by Kylo firing some shots into the fucking hangar bay. Since when is this a fucking thing? You can't just fly up to a hangar bay, fire a missile or two, and destroy the entire thing. Otherwise, this would be in literally every space battle on both sides. We have seen ships enter the hangars at great risk, but not this stupid shit. Are there no shields to this sort of thing anymore? Are there no countermeasures at all? What the fuck? Immediately after that, Kylo's wingmen decimate the bridge the fucking bridge, the area with every significant player for the leadership of the Rebellion. Apparently the fucking shields don't protect the fucking bridge. What is this dumb shit? Outside of that, killing Leia here was bold, considering Fish's death. I thought it was a tasteful yet impactful end to her character. And perhaps they can provide Poe with an element of an arc in terms of his responsibility for these events and his recklessness. Immediately after that, Kylo is pulled away for reasons. Let's go through those reasons. The Empire cannot breach the shields on the Rebel cruiser, because they are too far away. The Empire, therefore, cannot protect their fighters that are right next to the Rebel cruiser, as if they care about their TIE fighters. But the Empire cannot catch up to the cruiser because it is smaller and faster. The Empire can stay exactly as far away as it is at all times because it's not actually faster. It's the exact same speed, I guess, despite them saying it is faster. The Rebels have a fuel limit and this means that they have X amount of time before they run out of fuel and therefore shields because that's how that works, and then they fall out of the sky, allowing the Empire to shoot and kill them because momentum is not a thing. So what's the Empire's plan until we reach that point? shoot at them and let them know we are still here until they run out of fuel, which is going to take over 10 hours. I didn't realize that your most powerful weaponry would also have the shortest range, but fine, that's just silly. I also didn't realize that you had a ship that was the exact same speed as the rebel ship so that you both cannot catch them but also do not lose them whatsoever. That's just silly. I didn't realize that you couldn't call for help in any way, shape, or form and have ships light speed ahead of the cruiser in order to blow it up once it reaches them. That's just silly. I didn't realize that you couldn't launch something from the current fleet you have, whether it be a weapon or a ship with the weapons required. That's just silly. Since fucking when were the Empire ships unable to catch up with smaller cruisers, for Christ's sake? This entire scenario is created so that people can engage in ridiculous plot lines and have a countdown looming over them while doing it. What the fuck? But this film is far from over. We see that Leia is not in fact dead and that she has sealed herself in a force field of death prevention and forces her way onto the ship from outer fucking space. She is promptly put on a stretcher and rests in a coma. Just what the fucking fuck is going on? I am not going to explain why this is fucking stupid. I am simply going to show you how a normal person reacts to this scene. <laughs> On that note though, how are they opening the fucking door without being yanked out? They just cut. They just cut from the door beginning to open to her being on the stretcher because that didn't make a lick of sense. We then cut back to Chewie who is memeing with the Porgs. It is so cute because one of the Porgs actually sees that Chewie- I'll just fuck off. Then R2-D2 tells Grumpy to help the dwarves but he says nah. But he will train Ray because he's convinced of that now for reasons. In the next scene they just casually say that Admiral It's a Trap Akbar is now dead. I'm not sure if he even had more than one line or one visual, but yeah, he's out. So much for that. What the fuck was the point? We are then introduced to a new Admiral character, since we kill established characters in order to bring in new ones, right? That's good writing, right? This new character is called Purple Hair. Purple Hair makes a speech about hope and then tells Poe he's a piece of shit who cost the rebels loads. 
and he is not allowed to know about her plan to escape the Empire because she doesn't like him. I love how she chastises him for losing the bombing fleet when the fleet did its job to a T despite being made of fucking paper. I would like to see how the bombers are supposed to be successful without being destroyed. I seriously don't understand how they could possibly survive unless your enemy is literally useless. We are then cursed to meet a new character for the series, Shrek. Shrek talks about how much she likes Finn intertwined with the sadness of the death of the lady from before that was her sister, I guess. She says that she stops people from running away and then stops Finn from running away and then Finn tells her about the tracking system so she comes up with a plan to go and deactivate it with Finn but the only way to do that is to break the code that protects the ship so they need a code breaker so they call the Orange Girl Yoda. Orange Girl Yoda thing apparently has a robot that can float around her that is capable of video calls at any time so they talk to her and she recommends to go and visit Casino land and find a high roller who knows how to break into the destroyer and get him to get them in and deactivate the tracker so that they can light speed away. <sighs> Poe asks how those two met and Shrek replies that it was luck. Poe then asks whether it was good luck. Why the fuck would anyone ask that after being told it was luck that brought two people together with the only available plan to save everyone's lives? What a weird fucking line. I am almost certain that the only reason he said it is so that Shrek could reply by saying, I don't know if it's good luck yet. Poe agrees to the whole thing and so Finn and Shrek leave for Casino Land. Finn apparently knew about this tracker because he always mopped the tracker's room and yet he hasn't told the Rebellion that the Empire is capable of tracking through light speed. I guess he forgot. On top of that, they literally just say that the tracker will be on the lead ship in the Empire's fleet. This is just how it works, apparently. The Empire doesn't put a tracker on each ship. That would make too much sense. It's not like they have innumerable amounts of fucking resources. Also, C-3PO was in this scene. Next up, Rey accepts the first Skype call from Kylo and tries to shoot him, but it doesn't work. Then some overgrown frog nuns complain about it. Luke explains the Force while tickling Rey in yet another tonally disjointed mess of a scene. Luke then asks Rey to do a meditate while explaining that the Force is everything and the Jedi do not own it. Rey then shocks Luke while exploring the Force and he claims that she wasn't even attempting to pray the gay away, and so he runs off to his hut in fear. Chewie has another meme, Kylo and Rey have another Skype call about how Kylo's a monster. We then cut back to Finn and Shrek, who are running around the casino world. Shrek then has this suddenly dramatic and harrowing tale to tell about this casino planet being filled with a bunch of evil white males who made money from being evil and nasty to all of the cute and helpless nice minorities in the world. Just in case you couldn't pick that up yourselves. Rich are getting richer, the poor are getting poorer, what a horrible world, yada yada fucking yawn. We then see Rey fiddling with her stick and she gets bored and fiddles with Grumpy's stick instead. Until he sees her and then flees to his hut in fear. Grumpy then says that Jedi allowed the Empire to rise as well as train Darth Darth Vader, therefore fuck the Jedi. This is the most fucking dumb thing to hear from Luke goddamn Skywalker that it hurts to listen to. The guy knows all about the balance, the betrayals, the turning from one side to the other, and yet he is happy to let the Jedi die out and the Sith simply reign supreme? What the fuck? Grumpy then explains that he tried to train Ben, but saw that he too had the gay. Ben noticed this homophobia and so he dropped a house on Grumpy and assumed he was dead. Like, that's a line from the film. He must have thought I was dead. How the fuck would a Jedi make the mistake of not knowing when their master is dead or not? What the fuck? Anyway, the Jedi Temple is destroyed and Ben is evil. GG well played, let's move on since I'm spending more time on this scene than the movie does. Rey then asks Grumpy to come back and save the dwarves, but he says nah. Back at the high speed and high stakes chase, we see that the medical frigate gets destroyed, just in case we didn't understand that bad things are happening here. This is not an extremely drawn out and boring scenario. No, this is action packed. Purple here just says continue. Finn and Shrek look for the codebreaker but before they can they are put in prison because they parked wrong and in prison is where they meet another codebreaker who can do everything they need including break out of prison. What the fuck? They break out. They pay their respects to Peter. BB-8 has an old guy's bits shoved into his coin slot and ends up using it as a machine gun. No, I'm not fucking joking for Christ's sake. Then they ride ripoffs of The Last Guardian to freedom, almost wrecking the casino and potentially murdering the evil white males while evading the gunless sentry helicopter things. Gunless because shooting these animals is much worse than allowing them to destroy fucking everything, right? They are then nearly trapped and Finn has this stupid fucking line. It was worth it though. Tear up that town. Make them hurt. At least we made them hurt? 
What the fuck are you on about? You trashed the casino. You trashed the living areas of the rich people. They are likely insured, you fucking twat. Who do you think is gonna clean up all of that? The fucking slave labor. The poor people. You've provided potential whippings and punishment for ages to come. For all of the innocents on this fucking planet because you wanted to destroy property. What a boon to the stereotype, you fucking idiot. Then Finn and Shrek are trapped on the cliff's edge, but luckily for them, the codebreaker they met in prison, who broke them out of prison, has stolen a ship, has as BB-8 and is offering to save them and take them to the Empire's fleet and get them on without having negotiated a price yet. What the fuck? Luke then tries to open a Skype call with Leia, but she's AFK, and then we have another tonally balked scene where Rey asks Kylo why he killed his father, and then makes a meme about how he isn't wearing a shirt. <laughs> Kylo says that Grumpy attacked him in his sleep and that's why he murders thousands of innocent people now. Rey is aroused by this and so she goes to visit the gay and finds a mirror. How the fuck does a desert planet born and raised girl know how to swim, by the way? Ah, oh, what the fuck ever, Porgs are cute. Rey then has Skype sex with Kylo and Grumpy flees in fear to his hut, but this time Rey clocks him over the head with his stick and demands to know the truth of the gay. Grumpy tells the same story again and shatters his own character even more. There's no information about the Knights of Ren, the achievements of the temple and culture that Luke built, how Han and Leia reacted and interacted with Grumpy over all of this, no, nothing, nothing, nothing at all. Just that Grumpy was mad that Kylo found the gay and got caught peeving on him while he slept. So Rey asks Grumpy to help save the dwarves and he says nah, again. So she leaves this time. Yoda then pops up and it's probably the best scene in the film just for the novelty of the puppet alone, but they fuck it up anyway. Apparently force ghosts can now hit things and control lightning. That doesn't complicate anything, does it? I have read literal comments speculating that we can hope to see force ghosts fighting each other in the future now, since they have added this to the mythos. What. The. Fuck. Yoda tells Grumpy to stop being Grumpy, and Grumpy says nah, but yeah. Yet another dark and serious scene and the dramatic tonal shift to Puppet Man giggling. What oh, the fuck ever. The Codebreaker wants Shrek's necklace, and he'll do the job for them in exchange for this. Moments later, he tells Finn that not everybody is strictly good or evil, and and Finn is shocked by this as if he is like five years old. We then cut back to the fleet that is now reduced to a single cruiser, and Poe is furious that Purple Hair is going to abandon ship by putting everyone on transports that will surely result in their deaths. Ray then asks Chewie to stay on his Uber app because she will call him when he's needed to pick her up after she goes and visits the Empire for a bit. What the fuck? We then cut to Poe trying to explain his plan to Purple Hair and she just says, nah. So he orchestrates a mutiny and relieves her of command, but doesn't put her in the brig or anything. He just says, stay right there and, you know, don't do nothing. We then cut to Finn and Co breaking into the ship, only they are spotted by an evil BB-8. Then Ray says that Kylo is actually good, despite murdering many, many innocents in cold blood, including her father figure Han Solo, which she doesn't give a shit about anymore. But then Kylo says that Ray is actually evil and she is stunned by this shocking conversation that we already got in Return of the Jedi with characters who had actual reasons to believe in each other, but what the fuck ever. We then cut to Finn and co, who break into the tracker while sharing out loud the plan to evacuate the transport ships, but Purple Hair breaks free of her not prison and begins to get back to the control room. While that is happening, Finn is foiled captured. And there is a shocking reveal to show that the evil BB-8 droid was behind all of it all along, as well as showing us that Captain Phasma is alive and actually here. Wow. The doors to the control room are blasted open and in comes Leia, who shoots Poe with a stun. Ah. Uh? Purple Hair and Leia exchange thanks, and Purple Hair explains that someone has to stay behind to pilot the ship, because droids and autopilots aren't things anymore. And I... What the fuck is going on? Purple Hair isn't evil. Purple Hair was doing the right thing. Purple Hair is now protecting everyone and sacrificing herself to save them. Purple Hair was the fucking good guy. Why the hell did you make me and everyone else hate her movie? What is happening right now? Ray meets Snoke, who says that he wants to know where Luke is, and then he will kill her, which is the most boring motivation for him to bring her to him that anyone could have theorized, but fuck it. Boring is the new subversion, I suppose. Snoke literally just pulls the information right out of her. <laughs> yeah. 
and then follows the scene in which the whole film is fucked. Lair explains that there is a hidden old rebel base planet that is highly defendable and the transport ships are all hidden too so we can just move everyone there. And Purple Hair was doing the right thing the entire time. She simply failed to tell fucking anyone. She was doing the literal best thing ever for everyone and she is sacrificing herself when they could have had any other pilot stay and she just didn't mention any of this to the commander of their fucking fleet. A commander who is hot-headed and prone to solving problems himself. What the fuck, film? You are drunk. This realization literally makes Finn's point in the film completely redundant, as well as Poe's conflict. We then find out the Codebreaker Man has told the Empire about the transport and has been paid handsomely for it, so the Empire begins shooting into the crowd of transport ships. Leia and Poe's ship isn't hit, as Poe still has plot armor from when he downloaded it earlier. Snoke then pisses off Rey, and so in a fit of rage, she grabs her lightsaber and charges at him, only to have him fling it around her and bonk her on the head with it. Was this supposed to be funny? What is with the fucking tone of this shit? We are then treated to Snoke showing the destruction of the rebels, just like the Emperor did with Luke, except it makes no sense here because the transports were discovered and fired upon like one minute ago. How the fuck is Snoke aware of this? Is he omniscient as well as omnipowerful? What the fuck? So Snoke tells Kylo to kill Rey, and instead he kills Snoke with a lightsaber trick and a play on words. This would be great if not for Snoke saying, I cannot be betrayed. I cannot be beaten. Also, if not for Snoke showing himself to be ridiculously powerful beyond belief, but whatever, Snoke is dead now. No history, no development, no motivation, no understanding, nothing. What a fucking cartoon. Now, I love action scenes as much as the next person, and the scene in the throne room is fantastic, but fucking hell, Ray. You're able to nail all of these guys. Who even are these guys? Uh, are they the Knights of Ren? Why do they not care that their master is just dead? Why, why would they keep fighting? What's the point? Why does she do better against them than Kylo does? I, uh... Rey is good with her stick, and so she can hold her own against elite saber-wielding knights of any number. Now, Rey Sue? Kylo then asks Rey to embrace the gay, and she says nah. Finn and Shrek are about to be killed by Captain Phasma, but lucky for them, she wants to explore her fetish, and so takes ten years to actually kill them. Purple here then hyperdrives into the Star Destroyer ship thing, and honestly this is the most incredible shot in the film. Gorgeous, creative, and dumb as fuck. If this is something they could have been doing, then why the hell haven't they made ships specifically designed to hyperdrive into all of the large and destructive ships for battle? Hell, this might actually work on the fucking Death Stars. What are you doing, film? What the fuck? After the wreckage, Finn and Shrek go from being right next to Phasma and an army of troopers to an empty hangar and Phasma being on the other side with a bunch of troopers beside her. How is anybody working on continuity? Does anybody on set have any idea what's going on? Who the fuck knows? A fight breaks out and an... ATST Kills everyone except Phasma. It is driven by BB-8. For fuck's sake. Phasma then literally loses her gun for no reason. There is no scene to show her dropping the gun or having the gun blown out of her hands. It's just gone. This piece of convoluted setup in terms of all these pieces on the board allows Phasma and Finn to have a melee weapon one-on-one. -on -one. It is so poorly done and so contrived that it drives me fucking nuts. During this 1v1, Finn says... Let's go, stop it. Stop that right now. You stop yourself from being a complete fucking joke film. What the fuck are you doing? What the fuck? Who wrote this stupid shit? None of this makes any sense, and what does make sense is fucking cringe. Also, Phasma is dead, so yeah, I hope Brienne is happy with her three minutes of screen time, zero development, and embarrassing beatdowns across two movies. What an amazing character. I fucking remember Dexter Jetster more. He had more effect on the fucking story than she did. Anyway, everyone has made it to the ice planet that is actually salt. They have a character point this out personally. This place is not Hoth people. It is not Hoth. Anyway, on Hoth they try to close a gate and unfortunately one Empire ship makes it through. They all laughably begin to shoot at the hull with their blasters as if they can fucking hope to blow up the entire thing and it turns out this ship doesn't have any members of the Empire on it. It simply has BB-8, Finn, and Shrek. How wonderfully 
convenient. What the fuck? The rebels then send out a distress signal and attract all of those that will defend them. Unfortunately, despite being in the strongest base with a legendary wall to protect them, the Empire happened to have Grand on board, and so they dropped it onto the field. In response, the rebels prepare to defend Hoth from the 8080s, and our plucky heroes use some unconventional ships to defend themselves. But then TIE fighters attack and humiliate the retarded plan. Poe quickly realizes this was all pointless as they are getting shredded by TIE fighters, but then at the last moment, the Millennium Falcon drops in and saves the day. Remember that in A New Hope? Remember how when Han did that in A New Hope, it meant so much because his character had reached some form of an arc defending a cause instead of running away? Now we just have it happening because it happened before. <laughs> anyway, there are more Porg memes, people laughing and crying, but once Kylo sees the Millennium Falcon, he sends every single fighter to chase the Millennium Falcon, thus giving our heroes the chance to blow up the cannon before it reaches the wall. What. The. Fuck. Fuck off. More Porg memes. More flying. Shooting. Another meme. Then everyone in the ships except the characters with lines die and Poe says fuck it let's go back whatever. Poe literally says that it's a suicide run and despite that Finn says he can do it. Finn has a character moment. He spent his time running from the enemy, running to avoid the hurt, concerned only with himself and Rey. And here, his values have changed. He values the people, the resistance, and this will save them all. Sacrifice yourself, destroy the cannon, and you can save the Rebel Alliance. But nah, Shrek pops out from the side and saves him from doing something right. How the fuck didn't Shrek explode by plowing into Finn? How the hell weren't they shot on the way there when everyone else was? How the hell didn't the at actually shoot them once they had landed and just sat right outside them? How the fuck didn't the laser just melt them anyway? Ah, fuck off, film. Shrek then says, you don't want to win by fighting what you hate, you have to do it by saving what you love. This makes no goddamn fucking sense and it's why I hate this character. Her sister died destroying the symbol of hate, the Dreadnought, a fleet killer. She dies to potentially save thousands by targeting hate directly. By stopping Finn from destroying the cannon, you not only stole a great character moment from him, but you let the Empire blow up the only safe haven for the rebels and thus doomed them all to death, you fucking idiot. Defend those that you love. You stopped him from doing that while you saw the fucking wall blow up behind you. This couldn't be any more poetically fucking retarded. At this point, there's literally no escape from behind that wall. What you said about love makes no fucking sense at all. God fucking damn it. Shrek didn't even have the decency to fucking die. Luke then says hello to Leia and that he's sorry about everything or whatever and he challenges Kylo to a duel while Finn somehow managed to pull the body of Shrek across the whole fucking battlefield. Bear in mind that they were downed at the at and Finn pulled her all the way back to the base without the fucking Empire stopping them. They are literally on white floor. How the hell do you not see Shrek being pulled across the entire fucking battlefield? Poe then figured out that Luke is actually stalling for the rebels to get out. Luke is just buying them as much time as he can so they can leave the planet. Luke didn't say this to anyone, nor did he share where the exit is, so if he actually had this as a plan, why the hell did he execute it like a fucking idiot? You know, Poe po just knows this. Poe and friends follow a marketing ploy to the hole in the wall where Rey looks for the reverse of that opening with a different marketing ploy. Luke avoids Kylo at every turn while referencing the Matrix and reveals to Kylo that he isn't actually there, lol. Luke memes and then leaves. Kylo rages, Rey opens the hole, and everyone gets on the Falcon who had plot armor and then leaves with some comments about building the beginning of the rebellion. Fucking keck. For some reason, Kylo couldn't actually tell that Luke wasn't there the whole time, and he's infuriated by the turn of events, as he now can't kill Luke Skywalker. He has been tricked, and Luke has escaped. Luke Skywalker did not die. And in the next scene, Luke Skywalker dies. What the fuck? Who the hell approved this fucking mess? I mean, Jesus Christ, this film is a true test of how much the fans will put up with before letting a Star Wars film sink below a perfect 10 rating. People think this is quality, that this was made with some level of good writing. This is a horrifying mess and easily the worst Star Wars film in the series. You can like it as much as you want, but it is a fucking disaster. The Force Awakens has a bunch of flaws, absolutely, but it provided massive amounts of freedom for a sequel. Choose whatever 
whatever the fuck you want. Parentage, villain history, intertwining and complicated levels of good and evil, the history of the Force and the world, both before and in between the movies and the whole saga. So much to work with. And they fucked it all. They fucked Snoke, Phasma, Finn, Shrek, Han, Poe, Leia, rules in general, the world. Why don't the Stormtroopers have Phasma's armor? It's the only one that fucking works for fuck's sake. Phasma, beaten the fuck out twice, fired a gun maybe a few times. What a fucking Snoke sets up calls across the fucking universe, tosses people from wall to wall, manipulates lightning without a second thought or effort, and he was killed by a lightsaber sitting half a meter away from him on his fucking chair. Wh why are you worried about the wall, guys? Leia is now force trained and proficient enough, she can just break it open for you, right? Do they need to worry about the tracker getting the Millennium Falcon? I mean, you know, the tracker, does, does it work on small- I, 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 Let's build a rebellion. No money, no vehicles, no ships, no crew, no support. We got all we need, we got Porg! Finn and Rose kissed, that was a thing. The Force now lets you have calls, hit people, bring down lightning, project yourself across the fucking galaxy. Why the hell didn't Purple here just tell people her plan? The entire plot with Finn would have been avoided, but this plot had no relevance anyway other than killing Phasma and finding a girlfriend, I guess. People speculate that Purple here didn't trust Poe because she suspected he could be a traitor that provided information about how they were tracking the rebellion, but that falls apart when you realize that every fucking person is going to get on those ships eventually and so they'll find out regardless. Not to mention that Poe fucking Dameron blew up the fucking Super Death Star in the first one for fuck's sake. Not to mention, five fucking minutes ago, he blew up the fucking Dreadnought. I think you can trust him. Fuck off. Luke spent the whole film fucking grumpy and shriveled only to die. No respect to his character nor his death. The deaths of Han fucking Solo and Luke Skywalker are met with one or two characters getting a reaction and the rest being fucking cut off. Harrison Ford was right to jump off this series while he could. Got out before it became a fucking joke. I am so sorry, Mark Hamill. I'm sorry for what they've made you fucking do. It is honestly harder to explain why the prequels are bad, because it is complicated. While this film is so rotten in most aspects, I find it hard to be convinced that people actually find quality within it. Other than that stuff, I loved it. Why do you even bother?